Being born in 76, a year after my parents came to the States, I get asked a question a lot about what did you feel like you were a child of an immigrant, having you know them being uprooted from Vietnam and coming to South Carolina, a place radically different from the only life they'd known up to that point. And the, the honest question is no, I, I didn't because South Carolina was like the only life I ever knew. I mean, I was born and raised there. So I would never experienced anything else prior to that to say that it was different. So everything that I was experienced as, as their child, as a, a child of immigrants, like was just seemed completely natural to me uh, growing up there. Um, so while I was being raised there, I, I'm sure there were things that my parents did to go out of their way to try to remind me or to try to instill in me a sense of heritage and legacy and as simple things as you know, spending Sundays at a language school teaching me Vietnamese, which went horribly bad. I only went for about a month before my parents realized it wasn't worth the fight to get me there. And then also things like remembering them driving very long distances on the weekends just so that their kids could play with other Vietnamese kids, other refugees. So, I mean, they definitely did do things and, you know, and on hindsight, that, that was very a positive experience. When I started writing Vietnam America, I, Part of the reason why it was interesting to me was because I had no sense of connection to my Vietnamese heritage, to my roots. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do Vietnam America was to learn a little bit more about where my parents came from. Um, and then when I finished it, suddenly, once the project was done, I realized, and, and after learning about all the things that I learned about, I did feel a greater connection to like my Vietnamese roots. And it's, I can definitely say now that the book is done, the project's done, that I'm more interested and curious and active like in the American Vietnamese community, community than I was before I, I set out work on with the book. I mean, Vietnam America started as me basically staying a little bit longer at the dinner table to listen to my parents a little bit more. Or Vietnam America started with me asking questions to my aunt during family reunions about subjects that weren't openly discussed you know, by the other family. So it, was, it started with a curiosity, a desire to learn and desired experience and basically this a, a child reaching a point where they really wanted to understand who they are and realizing that to do that they need to understand who their parents are. Uh, Vietnam America is, is, exists as a gra graphic novel or you know just a comic book because I've grown up with comics. Like they've um, entertained me, they've educated me, they've enriched me my entire life. So to want to contribute to this medium, this very unique, unique medium was very natural. Um, you know I really do believe that they're the art of reading and uh, they exist in this, this state between film and prose where those two forms collide to create a very unique, um, unique medium as far as um, its story and telling potential, its narrative potential. And the images allow for um, more layers of meaning and depth to, for the reader. Um, and on the flip side, unlike film, which is the other common medium that comics are compared to, there's a... Um, the element of time is removed from it in the sense that when you watch a film, I think you're, you're, you're watching what the director or the editor wants you to see like within a specific time amount. And it's constantly moving um, you know, experience. But with comics, since they're so static, that if you come across a particularly powerful image, you can sit with it for as little or as long as you want. And a lot of the pages in the book are intended for that, where you know you're reading 15, 20 pages at a time, and then you hit the climax, which is this full, you know, full page splash illustration or editorial solution that hopefully the reader will linger on for a much longer than they have the other pages to really soak it in. Not only the image itself, to, but to see, uh, but to also in context of the story that led up to that image. The visits that I've done to schools has been not to art classes, which initially I thought that would be the most likely outlet for Vietnam America, but they've been to English classes, to uh, cultures and civilization classes, and humanities classes, and creative writing classes. Um, and I think they've, what teachers have been drawn to about Vietnam America, at least the ones that I've talked to, is that it tackles themes that are very universal and that their students, regardless of where they came from or their background, can resonate or connect with these universal issues of Vietnam America, these topics of uh, immigration, of war, of uh, family legacy. I can say that my perceptions about the Vietnamese experience for Vietnamese people were all basically everything I learned in that 15 minutes of history class in high school, right? Which is like, okay, this is the good side, this is the bad side, this side fought for democracy, this, fight, this side was a communist, and whatever. Um, what I, so, 
in the process of doing Vietnam in America, what I quickly learned was that um, having family that fought for both sides of the war, it meant that it was no longer a question of like, what was right, what was wrong, who was good or who was bad. It was just more of like, well, why did these people do the things that they did? You know, why did my grandfather abandon his family, his children, to fight for the North? Uh, why did my uncle, why was he forced into, why was he forcibly drafted to fight for the South? Um, and I realized, just as all things I would imagine, especially uh, dealing with war, the deeper you dig, the more layers of ambiguity come up. And so it's not so easy as black and white as it was when you first learned about it, you know, in a history textbook. And that was one of the biggest issues working on this was like a lot of concern about once the book was done with what kind of criticism it would receive as far as from people who have much more at stake in this topic than certainly I do, being born you know, after the war and only coming to it now. Well, everything from like historians to complaining about how the architectural inaccuracies of things or you know, expats complaining about my, my, my portrayal of the, the Vietnamese South versus North forces and so on and so on. And you know, what I realized, what kind of helped me get over that hurdle in the beginning stages of the book was I realized that, look, if these, if these people are wind up reading the book at all in the first place, then that is a huge, huge accomplishment, <laughs> you know? And ultimately, it's, it's the story of a family. It's, it's not supposed to be like this archival text. It's, it's supposed to be something that is a, a journey, not only for the family, but hopefully for the reader.